Hello, my name is Pete Brown and thank you for checking out this video about my master beer tasting course that we've developed in conjunction with Beer 52. It's a really great idea. Beer 52 send you one of these boxes uh, with eight different beers in it. Uh, and there are four of these boxes uh, to represent four countries, which each are one of the most legendary countries in the history and development of craft beer as we know it today. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the UK and Ireland. Um, I think of all the four countries that we're doing, uh, the UK is possibly the most uh, unfairly maligned and not appreciated as much as it deserves to be. Not by the global craft beer community, but by people, beer drinkers in Britain itself. It's really weird. If you were to visit a craft brewery in California or Melbourne or, or, or Shanghai or, or, or Johannesburg, they would probably be using British malt. They would probably be producing British beer styles. 50% of British hops get sold to American craft brewers. Uh, and most of the styles they're brewing had their origins in British beer styles. Uh, this, is, this is really interesting that Britain as a, as a rule, not just in beer, uh, we tend to do ourselves down on the stuff that we're good at because if you do say, yeah, we're really great at this, People worry that you're a little bit kind of UKIPI, a little bit jingoistic, a little bit Nigel Farage-ish. And, and, and other countries don't have this problem. They, they, they find it much easier to say, yeah, we're good at this and we're not so good at this. Um, so that means that within Britain itself, British beer doesn't get the, the, the fair attention it deserves. If you go to a, a craft beer festival in the UK, back when we can have them again, chances are you'll see a lot of British brewers brewing American styles, Belgian styles, German styles, uh, and you, you'll struggle to find a British brewer creating a, a style that's firmly rooted in British brewing tradition, which is a bit weird. Imagine going to a French wine festival and finding them all brewing, uh, all, all, all doing um, Australian style wines, or going Going to an Italian cheese festival and they've only got French cheeses there. Uh, it, it just wouldn't make sense. So, so this is my plea to you to have another look at, at British beer and at British beer styles uh, to reappraise them and to really kind of appreciate where they fit in and, and, and give them another chance. They're not often as kind of showy and bombastic as American beers. They're not as weird uh, as Belgian beers, but they definitely have their place, not just kind of like a, a bland session thing, although they we, we invented session drinking. We, we invented beers that were made to be kind of enjoyed over a long period of time without getting too drunk. But, uh, but in this book uh, that, that comes with this case of eight beers, uh, I give you a lot of the kind of background, the history of British brewing and talk about how the styles that Britain created really underpin the global craft beer movement as we know it today. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but within that, there's no one style in craft beer today that's more important than India Pale Ale or IPA. Um, if you have friends who know a little bit less about craft beer than you do, they might well say, oh yeah, IPA, that's that American beer style, isn't it? Because the beers that we drink today that we call IPA are very much influenced by the American brewing style and where Americans have taken IPA. But Americans received IPA in 19, the 1980s, uh, late 1970s, uh, took British recipes, looked at British brewing records, and it wasn't until the 90s really that they started to, to make what we now consider to be American IPAs. In fact, if you're drinking American style IPA today, that style of beer has only been, really been around for less than a decade. It's a style that's changed as it's gone along. It's evolved to suit the taste of drinkers generation after generation, century after century. So out of the eight different styles of beer that we've got in this box, the first one that I wanted to put in was a traditional British style India Pale Ale which is quite different from uh, what you might think of, what you might be drinking when you, when you order an IPA today. So the one I went for, uh, which I'm, I'm delighted exists because it's a real kind of classic revival uh, of, a, of a beer style that we need back on our, back on our radar. Uh, Cheshire Brewhouse um, have, have created what, what they're calling an 1843 Heritage English IPA. So this is their attempt, looking at old brewing records, looking at old recipes, to get back to India Pale Ale as it was nearly 200 years ago, when it went on ships uh, from, from ports in Liverpool and London on a six month sea journey uh, to go to Calcutta, Mumbai and other English colonies uh, in, in India. Now, leaving aside the dodgy politics and, and issues of colonialism about why the British were there, uh, 
they couldn't brew beer while they were there. Beer had to be sent by import. It was too hot there. We didn't have refrigeration, lots of other things. Uh, so this was a beer style that not just survived a six month sea journey. A lot of beer styles survived that journey. More porter went to India than, than anything else. But IPA was the beer style that was celebrated when it got there. It was a beer style that was written about. It was a beer style that had songs written about it. It was this beer style that became synonymous uh, with the continent. And then when people came back, to Britain, this is the beer they wanted to remind them of, of their time in India. Um, so the first thing you might notice about the Govinda IPA is it's a lot darker than you might expect for something called an IPA. We, we now think of IPA as quite blonde. Uh, even 15, 20 years ago, you would have expected an IPA to be more this color, this kind of a, a caramel uh, amber color. And if you think that's too dark for an IPA, remember that when IPA first arrived, most beer was dark and murky, black, you couldn't see through it this is pale compared to what most beer used to look like and it's it's still pale now compared to compared to a, a lot of what beer can be it's interesting on the nose uh you can definitely get the hops there there's a lot of hops in this beer which is kind of a prerequisite for an ipa and they're there on the nose but they're, they're not the big juicy citrusy uh grapefruity hops that are so fashionable now the flavors are more complex, they're more mixed. Uh, I'm definitely getting some kind of opal fruity uh, fruitiness, uh, but it's not one dimensional. It's mixed in with a lot of other stuff. Uh, it, it tastes like it's going to be very sweet, but there's also kind of caramel, a bit of banana, um, uh, a bit of kind of citrusiness. Mm. Now, generally, when a beer is darker, that means it's got sort of more characterful, more flavor malts in it. And that's what gives it the color. And what's interesting here is, is, is you got all that hop character, but you've got the, the malt character then in there competing with it. Um, it it's, it's a very balanced beer. And we have this misconception that balance is boring. It's not. You can have balance up there or you can have balance down here. And I always like to think about it, about it in terms of music. If you imagine loads and loads and loads of hops, uh, like a guitar solo uh, in, a, in, a, in a rock band. That guitar solo sounds a lot better if it's got a really driving, cracking uh, rhythm section behind it. So imagine this beer is not just the guitar solo, but also the bass and drums and the rhythm guitar. So much going on, really nice and balanced. Um, and I, th I think I would hope that you could see the connection to IPA uh, as it is today. This is the beer that was made to last uh, it was made to be perfect for the climate in India. And it's the beer that inspired all those American craft brewers to start brewing something else, which they took to the next level, which they took somewhere else. And as we'll see in another video about America, uh, a, a different beer, about as, given that it's still called IPA, it's about as different as you can possibly imagine for something that contains loads of hops. So, so that's, that's a really important beer and one of the eight beers that we've got in our, in our selection. Now, we could have had... You know, we've got porters, we've got stouts, we've got golden ales, lots of other styles in this box. But the other one that I think is is latterly uh, just as important is ESB. And, it, and I'm really, really pleased to see a lot of younger craft brewers now making uh, ESBs and exploring these darker, maltier styles, uh, getting into what malt does in beer as, as well as hops. But if you're going to talk about ESB and you can only choose one, then we have to talk about Fuller's ESB. Why do we have to talk about Fuller's ESB? Because ESB might, not, might now be considered a beer style in its own right. But ESB is just the name of a beer. It's the name of this beer. <laughs> Fuller's called this extra special bitter because they, because they thought it was extra special and it's a bitter. And so influential was this beer that it went from being the name of one beer to being the name of an entire beer style that was copied around the world. And, and fair play, I'm glad people have done it. There's a great story about Fuller's ESB, which is that when the Americans came to write the style guide for ESB beers, they obviously had to write that style guide uh, around what this beer tastes like. So if you're going to judge an ESB in a competition, it needs to take, taste like this. So Fuller's won that category in the uh, World Beer Awards in uh, 2006. Two years later, when the same beer was entered into the same category, which it invented, it was disqualified for not being to style. So the beer hadn't changed, but the style of ESB had. But this is what ESB is based on. And if you haven't had it before, it's, uh, oh my God, I guess, I guess 
really simplistically, you could say it's halfway between an IPA and a best bitter, right? which, which doesn't do it justice at all. Uh, but, but this is um, it's 5.6 percent. It's a strong bitter. You know, when you have a few pints of this, you, you, you really, really do feel it. Uh, it's not a big hop explosion. It's more on the balance side uh, than the IPA was. So everything's just a little bit toned down, but it's still a very complex beer. And um, yeah. I'll just wait for a bit of it to flash off, just coming out of the bottle. But this is like, um, I mean, the, the mental images that flash up are, are things like a cake mix, no, not the baked cake. And please, 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 I don't mean like a pastry stout. I mean, like just hints, just a, if, if, you, if your mum was cooking and mixing a bowl of cake mix and you're just standing near her, it's just the, the aromas that come up off that rather than just being chewy and excessively sweet and things like that, like you're actually eating it. It's the aromas that come off it. Um, so you've got this sweetness, you've got kind of a dark berry, uh, character, uh, richer, treaclier malt coming out. I think that's a really good point. But but all that is suggesting that it's going to be an excessively sweet beer. And of course, it's not because you've got really generous hops in there as well. Mm. It just delights the mouth. It, it just goes everywhere and it does everything. I wrote a piece about this last year about this specific beer and there's a there, there's a kind of an imperative in in beer writing and in beer judging if you're kind of going to put a review of something on untapped or uh, or beer advocate or something like that 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 we have this sort of thing where you have to break down the flavor and say yes i'm, I'm going to list all these different flavor uh, compounds these, these different hints and references that i can get and i liken that process to to a, a psychopathic kid uh pulling the legs off his pet rabbit and then getting upset because he can't put it back together there's almost a danger of spoiling this beer by trying to break it down the whole of it is magnificent it just exists it is the sb uh, and just appreciate it so i'm actually jealous if you've never tasted these beers before and you're going to get this case i'm actually jealous of you because your, your first time tasting these beers if you do think British beer is boring, you're going to have your mind blown and you're going to be completely reassessed. If all you've drunk for the last six months is sours or, or, or hazy, juicy IPAs, beer can also be this and, it, and it's also wonderful. So I hope that's piqued your interest. Uh, there's a lot more detail uh, in, in the book uh, and a lot more beers in the case. So, so thank you for watching. Uh, if you've got the case already, I hope this is kind of really going to help you get into it. Uh, if you haven't bought the case already, I hope this really makes you want to buy it and, uh, and enjoy it. But anyway, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this now. Cheers. <laughs>